Good morning, 7th graders. How are you doing today? Hopefully good. I've been feeling a couple aftershocks in the last couple days of earthquakes. Uh, shook my house pretty good. All right, real quick, we'll try to finish uh, Chapter 12 today, um, hopefully before I sneeze. Okay, we already talked about the east, or more correctly, by today's standards, the northeast. Uh, it was shifting from agriculture to industry. That's where the factories were. The immigrants provided a lot of the workforce. Um, and uh, there were a lot of um, transportation improvements. The turnpike, which was a private, privately maintained road. You paid a little bit of money, and so you could travel on that. They dug canals, and the biggest uh, and most important was the Erie Canal. And by the 1830s, the very first railroads uh, began to uh, be used. Also steamboats, uh, they applied steam power to boats as well. Uh, the populations of the cities began to grow very quickly. Uh, that's why there's so many people up there today. Uh, 50 million people live in that part of the country. Now we're going to look, look at the West. Uh, the West consisted of everything north of Arkansas and north of the Ohio River and west of Pennsylvania. So all the way out to Nebraska and Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, Illinois, places like that. The biggest thing they had going for them out there was lots of beautiful farmland. So needless to say, it became the farming area, the breadbasket of the United States where most of the crops were grown. They could not have plantations because they had harsh winters and so forth. So they were able to grow a lot of corn and wheat and uh Grains like that, you know, for the consumption of the people, and also to a certain extent cattle uh, as well. Uh, lots of natural resources up in the north, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. They had lots of timber. Um, plenty of rivers. The Mississippi and the Ohio River could be used, as well as the Missouri River. All right. Some of the uh, equipment and tools, uh, some of the inventions that improve things. Up until this time, people, farmers used iron plows, and iron is very brittle. And when farmers got out to the Midwest, what we would call the Midwest or the West, uh, the soil was very thick and very heavy, and it had a lot of roots in it. So the iron plows would break. So along came a guy named John Deere. That's where the company gets its name. John Deere invented a steel plow because steel bends a little bit. It's a little bit more elastic. And the steel plow allowed farmers to plow the rich, heavy soil of the prairies. The invention of that plow resulted in many farmers moving west of the Mississippi River. Now, there was lots of land, so the farms out west were big. Well, a guy named, in 1833, a guy named Cyrus McCormick invented the mechanical reaper. And you'd hitch up some teams of horses to it, and it would actually harvest the grain. Um, and separate it out from the chaff. Uh, today, the combine, if you see combines out in the field, they're basically modern versions of the mechanical reaper. And uh, what this would, what this allowed was that for farm, it allowed farmers to um, harvest larger areas for the big farms. So teams of farmers would get together harvest season. Five or six mechanical reapers would go out and do one farmer's field, and they'd go to the next farmer and so forth. And so uh, it was able to uh, harvest a lot of territory very quickly. So the combination of the steel plow and the mechanical reaper opened up the west uh, to, to farmers. A lot of immigrants headed west, Germans and Scandinavians, um, people like that. As far as transportation, to prior to this uh, period, the best way to connect the east to the west was the Ohio River and the Great Lakes. And, of course, the canals helped. Um, but there was a road that the government actually built. It was called the National Road. And it connected Cumberland, Maryland, where my niece lives. I've actually been right on the spot where the, where the uh, National Road began. It connected Cumberland... Uh, Maryland to Wheeling, West Virginia, and later it went all the way out to Vandalia, Illinois. It was basically the first highway for America. It was made up of crushed stone, so it was a gravel road. So it was well-maintained, and so you could actually take a wagon from Illinois back to uh, Cumberland, Maryland, uh, and get on the 
there's a, there was a canal there that connected the uh, Chesapeake Bay to the west, and it helped a lot. Um, all right, some of the other stuff. Uh, also, all these transportation inventions, the steamboat, later the railroad, uh, the canals, uh, the road, the national road, it brought the price down for a farmer to actually haul his stuff to market. So farmers made a lot of profit from this. They, they increased their profit. Um, and because they were making more money, they could specialize, okay? Their farms were no longer used just to grow food for their families and maybe a few other people. They were able to specialize. So the, uh, a farm would grow only corn or only wheat. And then they would sell it, and the farmers could then use that money to buy what their family needed. So you had kind of the beginnings of a consumer economy. Because you got to remember back east, the textile mills were producing material and ultimately clothing. So the, the farm women no longer had to make the stuff as much as before. They could actually make money from selling the specialized crop and then buy the clothing or whatever they needed. So that was very helpful. Um, <clears throat> money and credit was it was a little hard to get out west uh, so they had to create their own banks most of the banks were back east and they didn't really want to loan money to the farmers farming's pretty risky right so the farmers and the westerners created their own banks problem was they loaned too much money uh, to some of these farmers and didn't get it back so that created problems um, and ultimately uh, in some some periods of time, I know in the 1870s and actually in the 18, early 1840s, it created an economic depression. Um, people lost their jobs, their property, and so forth. And that's why so many people moved out to Oregon at the beginning of the Oregon Trail, because they had lost a lot of stuff back back in the eastern part of the West, okay, like Ohio and Illinois and Missouri and so forth. And they said, I'm done with this. Let's head out to Oregon and get a new start. And um, because people had borrowed too much money and couldn't pay it back, it, a lot of these banks collapsed, and it helped lead to an epic economic depression in the early 1840s. Um, all right. So basically the thing you need to know about the West was it was farmland, the steel plow, and the mechanical reaper uh, were, were invented to – handle the property out west, you know, the type of land that was out west and the crops that could be grown. Many immigrants did move out west, but a lot of the people who moved out west had been born in the United States. They just headed west for better better land. Um, transportation improved with the National Road. Of course, out west you could take a steamboat down to New Orleans. You could take a steamboat up to Pittsburgh on the Ohio River. Um, and later there were railroads. By the 1840s and 50s, the railroads had connected at least as far as Missouri um, to the rest of the country. Now we're going to look at the South. The South <clears throat> remained agricultural. They had no reason to change. Plantations grew a lot of stuff, especially cotton. Cotton was king. And slave labor was used to plant and care for and harvest uh, the cotton. The cotton gin had allowed um, the expansion of cotton production to other plantations. Primogeniture, where the youngest children had to go out and get their own plantations from you know, their father, uh, caused it to grow. So the plantation system grew all the way across Mississippi, Alabama, western Tennessee, crossed the Mississippi River to Arkansas, Louisiana, and as far west as Texas. Uh, people were growing cotton. And <clears throat> there was no reason for a lot of cities to grow down south. Uh, in fact, there weren't even a lot of towns. Every plantation was kind of its own little kingdom. Um, the master and mistress were like the lords, and then the, the slaves were the servants and the... Uh, you know, the peasants, basically. So it was a very stable <clears throat> society. Um, but problem was most of the money went to the top about 5%. Uh, 
Uh, those were the only people, the very wealthy people were the only ones who could afford to own and operate plantations. Most Southerners, most white Southerners did not own slaves. They couldn't afford them. And most of them were small farmers, and a lot of them were poor, especially the Southerners who lived in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, they resented, they did not like the uh, black dirt farmers. And when I say black dirt, I'm talking about the, uh, the quality of the soil. The darker the soil, the better it is usually. So the dark earth plantation owners, they hated them because they had all the money and power. Um, but it was a stable system. The slaves did most of the work. Uh, the growth of the slave population was tremendous. Uh, about, let's see, in 1850, there were seven million, seven and a half million white people down south and three and a half million African Americans, mostly slaves. Uh, the south had a lot of natural resources, but they didn't use them. The only thing they used was farmland for the growth of cotton. Now, the problem with cotton was it exhausted the soil. It used up all the nutrients. So you continued to have to move westward for new land. And um, so it sort of gobbled up the natural resources that way. Uh, Southerners did not need any new equipment and tools, really, other than the cotton gin. So they didn't need a steel plow. They did not need the mechanical reaper. As far as transportation, they had some roads, some railroads, um, but mostly rivers, river boats, uh, the Tennessee River uh, to a certain extent, but mostly the Mississippi and Ohio rivers and a few other smaller rivers as well. Um, so while the rest of the country was modernizing, uh, the north was becoming industrial. The west was specialized agriculture for food products. The south remained a plantation economy that grew basically only cotton. Uh, there were a few other crops too, sugarcane and a few other things like that, rice, but it was mostly cotton because that's where the profit was. That's how they made the profit. They grew the cotton. They sold it to the textile mills up north. The textile mills then made the shirts and fabric. So over in England too, the British with their textile industry, they needed southern cotton. So the South was the number one producer of cotton in the world, and that's where the money was. Unfortunately, like I said, only the wealthiest people, top 5 to 10 percent of the population, actually were making the money. Um, so that is basically what the uh, economy of the United States was during, from about 18, right after the War of 1812 up to about 1860. The North was growing more and more industrial with factories, especially textile mills producing material. The West was growing agriculturally, producing corn and wheat and other grains. And uh, the steel plow and the mechanical reaper allowed that to take place. Um, and the immigrants mostly were in the cities of the North and also out West. Not very many immigrants went South. Down South, the, the economy was cotton, which the backbone of that was, of course, the slaves. They were the ones who took care of the cotton and harvested it and so forth. And there was no need for factories. There were very few factories. Excuse me. There was um, no need for big towns and cities. So the South really did not develop uh, during this period. Uh, mo didn't really modernize. New Orleans was a pretty good-sized town and Charleston, South Carolina. That was about it. But nothing could compare to New York, Philadelphia, Boston, uh, and Cincinnati, you know, places like that. So, well, that is the end of the chapter. So I am going to say goodbye. I will be uh, posting something, maybe not a video, but posting something to review you guys before we have our Chapter 12 test. Okay, so be looking for that. All right, have a good one. Bye.